Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Danville School Board Forum, conducted by the Greater Burlington Partnership and the Government Relations Committee. My name is Steve Francis. I will be your moderator for this evening. Our timekeeper is Rachel Lindeen with the Greater Burlington Partnership. In the interest of time and fairness to the other candidates, I'm going to ask each candidate to observe the time signal and stop your response when time is up. <clears throat> the forum will consist of rounds of questions to which each candidate will have 90 seconds to respond. A decision was made by the Government Relations Committee to have candidates answer the questions impromptu and at random. In other words, they have not seen these questions in advance. Candidates seated in alphabetical order are Sandy Dockendorf, Jason Samples, and John Paul Van Buskirk. <clears throat> oh, let's uh, start by having you introduce yourself and share why you are running for a seat on the school board. Sandy, I'll let you lead off. Thank you. Um, again, my name is Sandy Dockendorf. I have served three terms on the Danville School uh, Board of uh, Directors. Um, my current decision to run again was a late decision. I had anticipated not running again, but after hearing some community input, um, felt that there was a need for me to continue one of my major issues here, which is to improve the communication within the school district and between the school district and the larger community. And recent events have made that very clear that we have an opportunity to bring our community together around um, various issues of controversy. And rather than be in one camp or the other camp, I'd like us to come together and work out how to be the best educational source for kids in Danville. Mr. Samples. Yeah, um, my name is Jason Samples. I'm glad to have the opportunity to run for school board. Uh, here in Danville. We moved to Danville uh, a little over 20 years ago uh, with one child. Uh, we now have seven, all who have either attended here, graduated from here, or are currently attending here. And so, uh, again, the, the school was a draw for us. Uh, we're, uh, we have a business here in town now, or are the second largest employer other than the school. And uh, it's just, uh, it's a joy to be here and to have this opportunity. Uh, you know, one thing that we've talked a lot about uh, in our family and our business and that I want to bring to the board is that, you know, all progress requires change, but not all change is progress. And so, uh, you know, the, the communication within, uh, within the school system, within our community, within the families, um, and then I think we have a great opportunity ahead of us these next few years uh, to adopt the right changes that will be progress. Thank you. Mr. Van Buskirk. Um, my name is John Paul Van Buskirk. I am currently a resident of Danville Community School District. I have two, kid, two kids that are in the district. Um, share the same type of path with Mr. Samples here. We moved in the district probably about seven years ago. Um, it was a, a quality education for our kids that we would like to take advantage of. Um, I'm running for the Danville District to bring a little more transparency um, and more of a healing culture for the teachers and the staff and the, and the students and the community here. Um, I also share the same thoughts that Sandy has with the communication that needs to be brought in and um, just bring the school and the community together again. I'd like to remind you all to speak loudly. Now we will get to the uh, questions at random. Um, you'll each have 90 seconds to respond. Each uh, participant um, will have two answer, uh, the first, second, all the way down, um, at random. So the first question will be for you, Jason. Question is, if elected, what unique skill set or expertise will you bring and how will you leverage that experience for the betterment of the Danville School District? Thank you. Yeah, uh, communication again is an important part uh, of life uh, and what we do. Uh, I've got a sales background. I was a commercial banker for 15 years now uh, on my own business. We have a little over 50 employees and go a lot of different directions. And uh, so, uh, you know, that's a, that's a family. Uh, this school's a family. And in any good family, I think communication is key. 
And uh, so that's a challenge, but it's a welcome challenge. And that, uh, that communication and open door or openness uh, is very important. And, uh, and I think that if elected, you know, I would like to talk with the, the community. I have a, a pretty good sounding board now as a business. We, we talk a lot with different groups and, uh, and the teachers, the kids in the school district, and uh, just excited about that. The, the challenges are there, but those are, uh, those are a great challenge, and I'm excited to, to be a part of that. Okay, I can read the question again. Uh, Mr. Van Buskirk, you'll answer the same question. Would you like me to read it again? No, that's fine. I, Thank you. Uh, I started teaching about 14 years. Uh, started in Fort Madison, and then moved into the Danville, Danville District uh, for my um, third through 12th year. Uh, currently, I'm teaching in Burlington. Um, I think my skills that I would bring to the table is the knowledge of school districts, the knowledge of um, what teachers go through in a district, um, the communication that needs to happen a little more with parents, um, and also to build that background with students. Um, I agree with Mr. Samples with the good speaking and um, the good communica communication that needs to follow that and back that up. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Question two. What do you believe is the primary priority of public education? Mr. Van Buskirk will let you lead off. Um, I believe the primary priority of public education is to educate all students, no matter the background um, or their knowledge. Um, all students can be educated and um, at a high level of education. I believe that's the, the main goal here is to educate all students and equality for all students. Ms. Stockendorf. Thank you. Um, I think that the primary purpose or the primary priority of public education is to prepare a workforce. Um, society needs people that are prepared to work in every walk of life and we need to be pretty much um, preparing students for whatever role they decide uh, they want to take. My mother was orphaned and was not allowed to finish school. And she impressed upon me and both of my brothers that education allowed us choices in life. Um, it didn't matter whether we were, well, she didn't give us a choice. We all went to college. We were the first in our, gener of, in our family to go to school. She put all three of us through college as a single parent. And my father died when I was seven. Um, but it provides choices. Um, it doesn't matter whether you're going to be an electrician or a physician. You need a background in mathematics and um, you need to be able to read and communicate. And I think that we need to make sure that we're preparing kids not only for the futures that we know about, but about those that we don't. Next question. What are your areas of concern regarding student achievement in the Danville District? Stockendorf, I'll let you. Thank you. Um, my question is most of the staff here will attest to is anytime we finish uh, our standardized testing, my question is always what question did not the majority of students answer correctly? Because I want to find the holes where we're missing. And I want to also be able to verify that the test itself has some validity. Um, so those, those are two ways of looking at it. I, I think that um, my biggest priority right now is that we're meet, meeting kids as they come in our doors. They're prepared in um, a wide array of ways when they walk in our doors. And I want to make sure that we're meeting every child's need who gets here. Thank you. Mr. Samples. Can you repeat the question? You bet. What are your areas of concern regarding student achievement in the Danville District? Yeah, I think it would be true in the Danville District as well as any district. The challenges that we have are the mandates and the rules and regulations that come down from the state um, or that uh, or the teachers have within the district. Uh, and then this, the things that those teachers, especially with tenure, see that they need to do, but somewhat challenged to be able to get to those things by some of the other requirements. So again, it's a challenge, it's a welcome challenge, but I think going after that lost that lost kid 
Um, and uh, I have a story that I would like to, you know, be glad to talk more about later, but I was one of those lost kids. And uh, in my past, since back in the 70s, I had dyslexia, and uh, it was a whole different uh, avenue and a path then, but a specific teacher uh, that took me under her wing and changed that. And, um, and so that's very important to me. Um, I was gonna go into education, and, and at that time, we called it special ed. Uh, but um, I was going to go into that field. The college I went to didn't offer that. But so that's very important to me. And I think those kids just seeking those out, making the time to find the lost ones, uh, making yourself available and pouring into those kids and their families, and to try to uh, to try to find a, a a way to reach them where they're at and to get them where they didn't think they'd ever be able to go and where they didn't ever be able to think that they would be able to achieve those accomplishments. Next question. One of the most difficult decisions you might have to make as a school board member will be budgetary. In your opinion, what are the financial priorities facing the Danville school system? Mr. Samples. Yeah, so not to let my banking background confuse things. I don't know anything about the finances of a school system, but, uh, but we'll be about ready to learn that. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's a business uh, from that aspect. When you look at the numbers, it, it is a business um, like any business. And, um, you know, we can't spend more than we have available. Uh, we need to, to be creative how we come up with those ways to make more funds available for, for what our needs are. We don't have the funds, it doesn't change the need if we have the need. Uh, if we have uh, the want and we don't have the funds, we need to wait. So uh, those are those are again, challenges. Uh, I welcome that. I think that'll be um, be good to be a part of that. Uh, hopefully, my background will uh, um, I'll be able to help with that and be part of that team that makes those decisions. But it's very important for our town. It's important for the kids in this district, the kids that have graduated from here in the past. You know, we all have to rally together. Uh, to make Danville something special. And uh, it's a public school, but privately, it's something that we should be really proud of. And uh, so I hope that I can make this, um, you know, take it, help take it from where it is uh, to a whole new level of that and just to make it something that, uh, that both Mr. Van and I, you know, moved our families here for, uh, for the school, not for the town, not for the job, not for anything else. but. Uh, so it's an honor to be a part of that, and I hope that I can help make changes there. Mr. Speak, everybody needs to speak up, just a friendly reminder. Okay. Um, I've watched a few school board meetings in the past, and I've, I've heard Sandy say that financially the district seems to be in very good condition. Um, moving forward from that, I'm worried about 2023-2024 with the rate of inflation that's going on. Um, you know, we're going to have to keep up with that. So. I see that as an obstacle coming down for the new board. Um, we're losing Andrew with you, which was a kind of a financial guru from the district. So we're needing to replace that also with another financial person to help on that account. Um, so right now, as the district stands, I think it's financially solvent. But coming forward, yeah, it's going to need some attention. Next question. <laughs> Available skilled workforce is the number one issue face facing employers in the state, including those in Southeast Iowa. What new policies can the Danville School Board put in place or what new or expanded programs would you support to ensure there are guided career pathways opportunities for students? Mr. Van Busker. Coming from the industrial tech background, um, there's going to be a lot of shortage as far as skilled labor. So I am a wholehearted support of any type of um, post-secondary education to help those students um, achieve faster paths to that workforce. Um, there is nothing that I see more pressing other than a skilled workforce. So I would be wholeheartedly supportive of those types of avenues. Thank you. Um, a skilled workforce requires a student body who understands what that terminology means and what opportunities are available to them. Um, I've spoken to um, the uh, executive director for the Burlington area 
um, greater partnership in ways that we can get employers in front of our students. I think um, students often think of school as that hurdle they have to get through to get on with the rest of their life instead of a launching pad that gives them um, more opportunities for the rest of their life. Um, I think any time that we bring in business people, um, entrepreneurs, um, college professors uh, to put in front of our students and give them the opportunity to dream and to see where they could go and to understand the pathway that they need to take to get there um, is good for our kids. So I would say um, I'd just like to see more opportunities to get local businesses in front of our kids. Thank you. Next question. What issues do you believe the Danville Community School District needs to address in its academic program and offerings? Sandy. This one is easy for me. Um, I uh, have uh, constantly uh, felt that we need to beef up our um, technology offerings. Um, my daughter graduated here in 2010. She went to school at RPI. Um, with a group of um, valedictorians and salutatorians from across the United States, and she was two years behind in her awareness of and ability to code and to understand computers in our lives. Um, she is now has two degrees in computer engineering and electrical engineering. Um, she was able to overcome that fairly easily, but that's on her. I think that we do a disservice when we don't provide um, that kind of opportunity to understand. Shoot, our doors are run by computers. We need to be able to make sure that our um, kids are prepared for a lifetime of dealing with them. However, I would also like to say that the school district has made great strides in the last couple of years to fill that gap, and I'm very proud of what we've been, done, been able to do. Mr. Sample, same question. Could you rephrase it? You bet. What issues do you believe the Danville Community School District needs to address in its academic program and offerings? Yeah, I like, uh, and again, not being able to see where Sandy's been on the board in the past there. Um, it feels like we have made some strides with, um, you know, with, uh, with our ag program. I know we lost some families because of that. That's, that's been neat to see that coming. You know, it's like anything though. Um, we can have, you know, uh, good intentions and broken promises, they don't do anything. Or, or good intentions and not the right funding or the right focus makes it really hard to accomplish those things. So, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's things that we need to, to, to learn or, or things that we don't know. We just need to make that a priority. Um, and it'll, it'll be good to be on the board and to see maybe why that hasn't been in some of those areas. Um, you know, we, we do have, uh, again, I'm, I'm looking for the, the kids that are lost or the families that are lost or, or may not have that hope. And um, it's, you know, it's not always the, the valedictorian. Um, however, that's important to make sure we help them excel, but it's, it's those others that are out there as well. And, uh, you know, the, the skilled labor is really important. Um, you know, we're starting a program here in town, GMT Garage, where we're going to take kids and teach them how to weld and do auto body and mechanics work and, and those things. It'd be great to partner with the school with that uh, or other schools and to give those kids some real life opportunities to, to get exposure of how they're going to use math, how they're going to use the computer outside of school, how they're going to use those things. So um, I think it's going to take us partnering with outside forces to get that done. Thanks. Next question, what is the school board member's role and responsibility? How does it differ from the role of the superintendent or building principal? Jason. Thank you. I was hoping you'd pick Sandy. <laughs> 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 uh, so uh, that's something I'll learn real quick. Um, but uh, if you elected, but um, you know, I think our, our role is to be open to what's before us. And, and that's the, any good, any good uh, teacher, administrator um, in the business world, a boss, an owner, you have to look at the team you have. Um, you know, you have to figure out how you're going to do the best you can with the players you have. If you have to make a trade, if you have to do some of those things. But, um, um, you know, I look at that like a coach. A coach can't do it without the players. The players can't do it without the coach. Uh, we have, you know, a lot of families and, and friends involved, and, and we have to rally together for the for the same cause. So, you know, I hope I hope that that's what we see in the future here is 
uh, is to break some of those barriers down, the walls that may, be, uh, may have been built a little bit uh, between some of the community and the staff or the staff and other staff and just to unite as a community and to, uh, we can do better than where we're at and, and it's gonna be exciting to help that happen to see the results of that. Mr. Van Buskirk, same question. Um, I like the Unite community part of that. Um, that's what I have, building community relations um, liaison between the admin and the community. Um, I see that you know the school board only elects one person that be the superintendent, and the superintendent's job is everyone below him. So um, the number one thing I say would be to support the community and create that intrinsic relationship between the school and that community. Next question. An individual school board member has no authority. Only the collective board can make decisions for the district. What skills or traits will allow you to contribute to effective operations of the board as a whole? Mr. Van Busker. As I stated previously, um, my background is in industrial technology. Um, I also have an endorsement in agriculture and biology. So that's me bringing those things to the table to help um, also bridge that gap between the teachers, um, the staff, to help maybe with some issues that may be going on between the admin and the staff. Um, ultimately, it's the admin's decision to help alleviate those issues, but if I can help that process, <coughs> that's, what, um, that's what I would do. Thank you. Sandy? Um, following my injury at work as a nurse at Burlington, what it was then, Burlington Medical Center, um, and I could no longer provide patient care, I had to sort of re-figure re out what my life was going to look like and decided that the helping people was what drew me into nursing in the first place and I wanted to continue doing that, but I had to figure out a different way to do that. So I became involved with um, DCAT which was an organization at the time that took um, leftover uh, state and federal monies and used them to help families to, in our community, in the three county area of Des Moines, Henry, and Louisa County, um, to solve some of the problems in our community, to help them connect to the people that were struggling, the folks that didn't have a lot of um, resilience to provide that in the community. Through that experience, I have then reached out to others. I serve on several uh, community organizations. I'm an advocate for families and children in our community, and that experience helps me on the board tremendously. It's not my in, um, background in education. It's not my um, educational psychology. It's the community advocacy um, work that I do that makes me a good school board member because it allows me to hear different points of view and recognize that there's value in disagreement and that I've never had a disagreement at the board table or any place else that I didn't end up that the answer was stronger in the end for having heard it. Thank you. Final question. The school district currently provides a full-time school resource officer in the schools through a contract with the Des Moines County Sheriff's Office. The school resource officer is present for school safety, to build relationships with the students and staff, and to assist the teachers and administration with achieving their educational goals. Would you continue to support the school resource officer program in the future? What are other opportunities for the student resource officer? Sandy, we'll start with you. I couldn't do any of the questions that they got to answer. Um, <laughs> I have to tell you that there is a, um, a large group of people in my life who think that school resource officers are a terrible idea, that they are um, a distraction um, and make some of our um, students feel less secure in the school environment. I also have a large number of people in my life who feel exactly the opposite and who feel that the, the um, resource officer provides for some of our students some um, adult uh, interaction in a positive way that they wouldn't have in, uh, in their lives otherwise. Um, I think it depends on who that person is and I think that there are great resource officers. I've heard nothing but good about the people that we've had in our district. I have heard of other districts where that's not the case 
and I would um, be very vocal if at the board table if I thought that our district was being served poorly by having that person in our school district. As it stands now with the people that we have right now, I support keeping it. Thank you. Mr. Sample, same question. Yeah, uh, ironically, I've got a bachelor's degree in criminal justice administration. So um, I think uh, I think it's a great idea to have uh, to have a resource officer here. Um, I don't know what involvement uh, he has in uh, in our school system currently, um, but uh, I would uh, I'd love to talk with him and to learn more about that. I think it's a great idea. I think while they're here. Uh, we need to make sure that they're busy doing and giving as much as they can to our students and our staff. Um, and uh, I think I think it's a great example to them. Uh, and even for uh, even for a vocation, that's a great vocation. There, there's a shortage right now uh, in, in the market right now. And, uh, so I think it's a great thing. Uh, and if there was if there was one that wasn't doing a good job, you know, agree with Sandy, but that would be with any position that I would speak loudly about if there was somebody who. Thank you. So now we'll move into the closing statements. Each candidate will have the opportunity to make a 60 second closing statement. And we will start with Mr. Van Busker. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to kind of give you an insight into who I am as an individual. Um, moving back on a couple of those questions, I am will have they supported for that resource officer. I think give him a little more responsibility or her into um, harassment issues, discrimination issues, uh, bullying issues, maybe making the, the state reporting go to a man um, or a woman in that role. Um, yes, it does. Have, he does have to fit for that district and um, the kids have to bond with that person per se. Um, Reading, writing, and arithmetic is always going to be my number one issue for the district. That's that's where it comes down to. Um, my background has that industrial tech teacher. <clears throat> reading, writing, and arithmetic, I can teach you everything else, but unless you have those three, um, the students start to struggle. So I thank you for this time. And, um, Ms. Dockendorf. Thank you. Um, my graduating class had 1,008 students. I think I remember that correctly, 1,008 students in Alexandria, Virginia. Um, I was one of those students who fell through the cracks. Um, there was a lot of violence going on in my school district at the time. Um, there were a lot of um, racial um, upheaval. Um, remember the Titans is a movie. I went to school at that school and during that time period. And when I was a junior, I walked in and said, I'm done with school, I want out of here. And because of a um, vice principal who had um, heard and me, I was able to graduate uh, a year early. I want to make sure that our school district has got the heart to accept a student like that. We moved our kids here for the community, um, for the school district, um, and I want to be able to make sure that the next generation is served well by Candle. Thank you. Mr. Samples, your closing statement. Yeah, again, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, it's an honor to be here in Danville and to be a part of this group. And we've got some great candidates. We've only got two positions. And so, um, you know, the public has a decision to make. I hope everybody does get out and vote. That's important uh, to have a good turnout there. And um, so, again, I just want to say that what I said earlier, that uh, all progress does require change, but not all change is progress. And so it's a, it's a huge responsibility for those on the board. It's uh, uh, to be able to, to shuffle through that and to make the right changes that make sure that Danville uh, takes that road to progress and that uh, that we come out on top and that we're a town that is looking for housing, that we are looking for a way to get the kids here, that it is such a desired place to come and to bring your family to live here and to attend this school, uh, that there's a waiting list. And uh, I love that. I'd love to be a part of that. And it's going to be an honor to serve. I want to thank the candidates for their interest in serving the Danville School by running for a seat on the school board. I want to thank the Greater Burlington Partnership and the Government Relations Committee and those in the audience here for your interest. 
Please vote for the candidates of your choice on November 2nd.